What's up, guys? We have a great episode for you today. Another interview. We're here with Sabrina. She has a YouTube channel called Wild Side with Sabrina, but also she is part of Stream Exotics Wildlife Foundation down in Florida. And we're going to, you know, show you what she's got going on here. So stay tuned. So we're going to take you on a little tour of Extreme Exotics Wildlife Foundation. And since it's out in the middle of a, a big area, it's hard to get great uh, cell phone service. So please bear with us on that. But for now, I'll go to the lemurs because they're a critically endangered species that we're super excited about. And uh, they're also very entertaining on camera. <laughs> I'm into that. So while you walk, do you want to tell everybody what, uh, like who you are a little bit and how you got started in all this? Sure. So uh, my name is Sabrina Clark and I've always had animals, always rescued animals. It's always kind of been my thing. Um, but the last, I'd say like five years, it's really grown into something I would have never imagined. So there's you know, I've always had like a lot of different reptiles, um, mostly like crocodilians and snakes, that kind of a thing. Um, but now we've really gotten into the mammals um, and really excited to be working with like some critically endangered species. And it's just what my passion is. I prefer animals over people always, always have, always will. Uh, <laughs> and so it works, you know, it's something I'm really passionate about. I think a lot of people get exotic animals as pets and they don't know what they're getting into so i started my youtube channel um with the hopes of getting the word out there that yes there are some exotic animals that can be good pets but there's a lot of them like lemurs that are not good pets uh for the general public or even for professionals so i work with these animals every day and i don't recommend them as pets so that was kind of the goal and then of course to bring in a little bit of a awareness to conservation because people always want to say, you know, oh, these animals should all be in the wild, but don't start that. <laughs> but what people don't realize is there's not a lot of wild left for these animals to go back to in most places. So don't start the yelling. Don't start the lemur yell. They're going to do the lemur yell and it's going to be really loud. <laughs> it's way better than what we're saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So for people that are watching this and they see those guys there and they're like, what are you talking about? They look like great pets. Why couldn't they get them? Huh? <laughs> it was pretty loud, right? I, I said uh, for all the people watching this and they see those awesome lemurs running around, um, what they kind of so, probably think they're fun. What's what's wrong with them? They, yeah, everybody loves them. And like I'm trying to see, I don't know if I can get them. It's hard to see where the camera's at. Um, and when people meet ours, they're like, dude, what are you talking about? These are great pets. No, these like right now, these two are young. They're all under three years old. Um, ju just starting to hit sexual maturity. We have another pair on the opposite side that is uh, a pair that's breeding and oh, 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 sorry. They're grabbing the camera. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get you back. <laughs> um, and we can't even go in with the pair on the other side that is um, breeding because they are aggressive. Um, okay. It's just the other part of it is these are troop animals. So yes, they can be very friendly with humans. Sometimes they can seem like they're really happy being with us, but they're never going to communicate and like bond with us like they do their own species. Um, and so it's something that I really try to speak out against is people that want to get one type of primate um, as a pet when really you need to have at least two because you're not going to spend 24 seven with them. And even if you do, you don't bond with them like they bond with their own kind. So that was kind of the goal of my channel and part of why we set the foundation up so people could come out and see how stinky lemurs are and how they can be aggressive when they get older uh, and how nasty their poop is and why you don't want one living in your house. <laughs> That's a fair statement. Yes. <laughs> I think, I think uh, people see cute animals and they're like, oh, that can't be so bad. And then they, they never really do the research. Oh, and think, the lemurs hung up on us. I think the lemurs hung up on us. <laughs> so, Ryan, 
You know, we don't do a lot of videos just me and you anymore. We need to do more of that. I know. We're not very interesting. Oh, here she comes. Hey, Lemur, grab the phone. <laughs> <laughs> they got tired of hearing it's us already. <laughs> it's their fault. <laughs> it's all good. Um. So... So, uh, yeah, I, I think I was saying that uh, I think a lot of people see really cute animals and they think, why not? And uh, they don't really do the research. And if you don't like, you know, animals eating your hair, um, then right. probably. <laughs> they seem like yeah, I mean, that's kind of what it is. It's, and then the other part of it is, you know, I do a lot of educational shows for kids. I do school shows. Um, obviously, we have the foundation here where people can do private tours. So they may interact with one of these animals and have a good experience and then think, oh, my gosh, I want one. But they don't realize that they're spending, you know, 30 seconds to 30 minutes, whatever it may be with that animal and not the other 23 and a half hours of the day, seven days a week. So, you know, it's something that I wanted people to be able to come out here and interact and see what they're like um, and try and get a better understanding and also for things like, you know, we have foxes and raccoons and things like that that are a little easier to obtain as a pet. And, you know, I wanted people to be able to see the kind of space they require, what they smell like, uh, that kind of a thing. So, you know, that's part of our goal out here. These guys are, oh, where are you? These guys are actually a uh, critically endangered species. This is a red rough lemur from Madagascar. Uh, so we're excited to be a part of a breeding program for them. Uh, just to sustain the species. But, you know, sustaining the species means sustaining them in zoological facilities like ours. It's not like we can go return them all back into the wild because, unfortunately, the wild's being cut down so that people can be able build farms and homes and factories. So um, it really, captive breeding and, and life in captivity and good zoological facilities is something that people need to really start supporting. Um, we, you know, you get a lot of animal rights activists that think, none of these animals should be in captivity and they don't seem to understand that then they would just go extinct. Right. Oh yeah. We're definitely into uh, conservation through captivity. Right. I mean, it's kind of the only choice we have, unfortunately, you know, yeah. it is what it is. And, and the other part of it that I like to tell people, um, I hate to burst their bubble, but not all 501 C three nonprofit rescues are good. There are yep. many, many, many facilities that we have visited and left completely disgusted, disappointed, and wanting to rescue the animals from the the rescue. <laughs> uh, so I I, yeah. I try to stress to people like before you um, you know share a post from a sanctuary or donate your money to them, make sure you go and visit and see how those animals are living because, um, like I said, un sadly more often than not, we have left places and been disappointed so there's another reason why we really wanted to build this foundation so that we could show people like this is how it needs to be done we're always striving to improve um, you have a lot of places that take donations in every single day and never improve enclosures for the animals we've been here for two years and we're already starting to make enclosures bigger build them taller move them to a different area so they have a better space that kind of a thing so um, just one more thing that I try to preach about in the world of exotic animals that's awesome we uh we you know that's one of the reasons why i think it's awesome that you're doing a youtube channel because when a lot of times these places they're like oh yeah look at these pictures you right. know these, like perfect setup you know close shot or whatever mm -hmm. of a picture on facebook or instagram or something and everyone's like oh that's awesome but until you see like a, a video where you're actually showing around um, I don't think people really grasp, you know, what's actually happening. Really so easy to trick people. <laughs> right. And does the animal have any kind of enrichment or is it just stuck in a boring cage? Does it have a social companion or does it, is it forced to live by itself? Um, you know, they're all things that people need to take into consideration. Um, and, and the other side of it as well is, is, you know, a lot of people think that just because a place has been around for so long, it's it must be good. Um, and, you know, again, I hate to say it, but like even here where we are, there are places that have been around for years, taken donations for years, and their enclosures are Florida Wildlife Commission's minimum 
recommended required size. I can tell you right now, FWC's required enclosure size should never be the standard. It is much too small. It's sad that they require such a minimal space for an animal like a lion. Um, and mm -hmm. so just because they meet state standards does not mean the animal's living a good life. That's a very good point. I feel like Debbie Downer. I'm sorry. I'm just telling <laughs> no. you the truth. <laughs> that's fine. We need to get the truth out there. Yeah, no, that's that's still it's good. I don't think that people really yeah, understand that. Um, so you, yeah, you know, I know, and and I'll catch a lot of flack for it, but I don't care. <laughs> so you're doing the YouTube channel, and also you're doing educational shows in schools, like you said. Is the actual foundation itself open to the public for tours, or is it closed? And not just right now. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, we're in general public for tours. Yeah. We are open for private tours. So when people come out, it's just their group um, and they get to, you know, walk around the entire facility. They go in with our capybaras um, and get to pet on those guys. We don't do like interactions with the lemurs or with the leopards just because it's not worth the risk to the animals. Mm -hmm. um, but they do get to go in and interact with our capybaras, which are the largest rodent in the world. I can walk down and show you guys, those guys if you want. And then they'll also get to interact with some of our big um, reptiles. So we have a four foot water monitor that they get to pet and take pictures with and like an eight foot Burmese python that they can hold. That's awesome. Right on. That's cool. Hi, <laughs> just a cranky one. Where are you? Just a cranky Aww. one. Hi, sweeties. And Luna's cranky, our caracal. Come here, chomper butt. <laughs> Come here, let's talk about women, chomper. So, um, <laughs> so Sabrina, uh, you seem to be super knowledgeable and you're, you're really passionate about your animals. What do you say to women out there that are, you know, teetering on the fence of if they should really get involved with exotic pets or exotic, uh, wildlife in any way? Um, I think that's a good question and I will, I will be honest with you and, um, you know, some of the guys might hate on me for it, but whatever. Um, I'll be honest that I think women probably have a little bit. Women probably, I think, can be a little better with it because there is a sense of like nurture. There's a, a little bit more of like that loving mother type of figure. Um, not to say guys can't have that too. Obviously they can, but I think it's something that it allows me to have a really strong bond with a lot of these animals, the way that I love them and they know that I love them. They don't view me as a threat. And so I think that's obviously something girls and guys can both accomplish. But I think sometimes girls have a little bit of an advantage with that because we are just naturally a little more motherly or whatever it may be. Um, but I find that that, that loving aspect that I have for them leads to a really good relationships with them um, so from the animal standpoint i almost think it can be a better thing uh and then from like a, a media standpoint or an industry standpoint um it's a little harder to gain respect sometimes but it's also a little easier to get eyes and ears on what you're doing because it's more unusual to be a little helpful and actually getting you a better platform. So I don't see it as a disadvantage at all. I actually see it as an advantage in both aspects. That's a great point of view. And uh, I can, it? yeah, it does. No, that's great. <laughs> um, we're trying to interview, you know, more women in the hobby. We've, a lot of the interviews we've done are with, with guys and, you know, we have different types of, uh, different types of people that we work with and, you know, a lot of breeders and things like that. So, um, it's good for us to to see other other aspects of what's going on out there, and um, I, obviously you're doing an amazing job. And especially just for two years, um, only being having the foundation for two years seems uh, pretty impressive. We have such uh, it, I've seen your videos, and they look like really great enclosures and things like that. So you're doing really well in that regard. Yeah, I mean, I, we've been built. Yeah, we've been building this place for about two years, um, and it has been, I mean, it's been nonstop for two years. Um, mm -hmm. Steve Brazil, who owns Extreme Exotics, which is our retail store and owns the Wildlife Foundation, um, he's kind of been in the industry for a little over a decade, um, and I've been working with him in the industry for a little over five years, but I've always had exotic animals my whole life. Um, mm -hmm. But I will tell you, going from like the hobby side of it and have just as pets and then switching to the industry side of it, totally different. Mm. Uh, uh, 
totally different world. And that's where the challenge comes in, you know, from a hot attention, from an industry standpoint, legit in what you're doing, um, because the industry side of it, there's, there's just, it's like night and day. You got people that do it really well and you have people that do it really crappy. And that was when mm -hmm. I got into the industry side and I saw that there's people that do it really crappy. That's when it became like a mission to me. So that's when it, it really kicked in that I was like, okay, I want to try and make a difference here and try and bring some attention to the good and the bad. I want to show people the good and the bad so that they can start to place their support in the right places. If that makes sense. Totally. This is Chomper. That's a really cute dog you got there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he has his moments. <laughs> <laughs> he purrs pretty loud. Sweet chomper butt, you're drooling on me. So you he's raised him like from the dog. baby? He's drooling like a dog. Yeah, we got him when he was um, probably, I'd say, 12 weeks or so. Um, and he, you know, I'd love to take uh, responsibility for how friendly he is, but he's just innately that sweet. We know several, several people that have the same, he's a Southern Bobcat. We know several people that have Southern Bobcats that are not nice. So we just got really lucky with him. And then Buttercup is our Northern Bobcat and she's beautiful. Um, and we got her at the same age, but she's not, not friendly, doesn't let us touch her. I'm surprised she's just sitting still right now. <laughs> Uh, but mm -hmm. she's a really, really beautiful cat. And then our caracal, um, Luna. Let's see if I can get her. Oh, oh, there it is. Luna is. She has her days. Sometimes she's sweet. <laughs> sometimes she's not. Um, but she looks really, wiry. Really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, okay, are, what are some of the, like, to give us an idea, what are some of the, like annual cost it takes to run something like this. Like you're trying to take care of all these animals. Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, it is an outrageous cost between enclosures um, and feeding and getting getting the help to build and the help to feed and all that. Um, I'd say the facility that, that we've built down here is probably at least a half a million dollar facility right now. Wow. Um, and yep and then um you know we're lucky we get a lot of donations um from places for like veggies and things like that we still have to buy the meat uh and so you know our meat costs are are pretty high considering we have so many carnivores but you know we're fortunate that we do have some veggies that are donated for things like the capybaras and the tortoises and the iguanas and things like that um, but yeah, it's a lot. I mean, and then we've got contractors out here almost daily. Um, I'll go show you what we're working on right now is they are putting in a pond, um, for one of our gators. We've got a gator named Lily. That's about eight foot and she's getting a new enclosure. Um, and that alone is like a, you know, just the pool for her enclosure is like a $30,000 project. So it adds up wow. really fast. Yeah, it adds up really fast. Um, and, you know, we're definitely, you know, the, 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 the tours will help to, you know, put some of that money back into the foundation. Um, but like I said, one thing that we feel like we're going to do differently is that the money we take in is going to go towards making better enclosures. And I think more places should be doing that. A lot of places take in um, donations for their bank account, you know, mm -hmm. and they do tours for their bank account, but you really need to be making a better life for the animals. Otherwise, why are you, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. If you're just doing it to show off and put money in your bank account, then you're not doing it for the right reasons. In my opinion, um, this is the pool that's being put in. I don't know how much you can see of it. Yeah, um, that's pretty big. It's, yeah, crap. it's a pretty big pool. Um, but she's a big gator, you know, and um, Steve has had her for many, many years. And so, you know, we want to give her a good setup to go along with, you know, it's it's like we got this place and we've been doing all these things. And so it's been great for everybody. And we want it to be great for, you know, the animals that we've had for many years. And we want it to be great for the animals that are yet to come. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's always contractors and everything going on. It's definitely very 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 expensive and that's why a lot of places do it minimally they do the minimum the state requires they do the least that they can to get the animals secured into an enclosure um because it is so expensive but again like we're gonna do it the right way and then if we can make you know money to support the foundation and support ourselves in the process and change the industry then great but it's always going to be about the animals 
All right. Well, let me try and go to the closest side I can and see if it you're, helps. You're fine. Whatever. Uh, oh, look at that. Give me a baby. So that's hey, a clouded Sam? leopard, right? Hi, sweetie. Hi. Yeah, we've got two clouded leopard girls. Um, and we have a male that we'll be getting in uh, about five or six weeks. Oh, he's the other one. Hi, sweet pea. Hi, gorgeous girl. I know, beautifuls. Um, so these guys are currently listed as a vulnerable species, um, which unfortunately means they're well on their way to becoming an endangered species. And they say there's less than 10,000 of them left in the wild. So this is probably the breeding program we're the most excited about. Um, mm -hmm. just because this is one that not a lot of facilities have and it's kind of like I always kind of compare it to the ocelot so if you think about it when's the last time you saw an ocelot even in a zoological facility um, yeah. they are yeah. slim to none few and far between and there's not many places that are breeding them so that is an animal that eventually we're going to lose um, and so this is one that I feel like is on its way to being like that because as not many facilities have them and not every facility that has them has um, breeding pairs. So mm -hmm. this is one that we're really excited to get involved with just, just because um, I think it's going to make a huge difference in sustaining the species. Anybody that can, that can be involved in that, it, it's going to make a big difference in making sure this animal doesn't go extinct. So uh, awesome. we've worked with, um, <laughs> We've been in touch with like a lot of the facilities that are really well known for breeding these because it's not easy. It's very dangerous. You have to pair them up at certain ages or, you know, the males will kill the females. So it's a it's a whole process. Um, and it's something that we've really had to do a lot of research. We've gone and toured a lot of places, met with a lot of professionals on it. And we're still, you know, working with them on a regular basis um, to try and make sure that we get a good breeding program going because apparently if you can get them paired up in breeding, they'll be buddies for life. So we're really hoping we get buddies for life. Oh God. <laughs> they seem like a lot of fun. <laughs> they are a, a lot of fun. They are definitely a lot of fun. Um, they're a lot of work. <laughs> I bet. And we've spent a lot of time with them in trying to teach them, you know, how to interact with people and how not to interact with people. Um, but they are, they've blown us away with how sweet they are. They're super affectionate. Like you would never in a million years have expected it. Their personalities are just incredible. Yeah. I'm actually really surprised at how easily you can interact with them. Oh, they're sweet. They're love bugs. Just like oh. a house cat almost. It's, it'll, that's why people get tricked. They're like, yeah, man, I could have one of those in my house. And you're like, eh, well. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So it hits about 60 pounds and yeah. <laughs> you know, might have a bad day, you know? And yeah. I will say too, like at nighttime, they get wild because technically they're nocturnal. Ooh, we're coming up over here. Um, I, and at nighttime, they get wild and they're too much. Like, they're, yeah. you know, they want to play, but they play rough and like the claws come out, not in a mean way, but just even in a play way. They are super difficult to be around when they're hyper um you can end up bleeding just from them wanting to play and love on you so yeah it's definitely another situation where it's like oh that's cute and it's like yeah it's cute right now for about 30 seconds mm -hmm. uh come back in four hours and tell me how cute it is right <laughs> awesome. yeah it only take uh, one bad uh time with them to ruin yeah. the day. Um, <laughs> and the other part is that they uh they have the largest teeth like proportionately for their size in the cat world. So they've actually been called like the modern day saber tooth tiger because of the way their teeth are shaped and how they're placed. Um, so they are definitely no joke, really long tail. They're, they're super dangerous animal as adults. And if you can see if I can get her to show us how big her paw is. No, you don't want to sit still. Oh, can we see how big your paws are? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no. no. Hey. Hey, we're back. So I do have a flip option. I can flip this around. Oh, see, that? <laughs> see, after your 10th or 20th uh, interview with us, you're going to be like, this will be like night and day. <laughs> I'll be a pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but, what are these guys native range? So Southeast Asia, China. 
And I guess uh, is hunting an issue or is it just deforestation? Yeah, so it's a little of both. Defo huge issue. And what most people don't realize is that deforestation is mostly due to people wanting to build farms. So, you know, of course, we all love farms. That's where our food comes from and that kind of a thing. Um, but farms are the reason that a lot of native animals are losing their homes. Um, the other part of it is poaching. Um, they do have incredible fur. And so there's always, you know, even in places that are like, if you think about in Africa and all the reserves they have, and they still have poaching problems. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, even like a natural reserve is not always a safe place for these animals. So, you know, these guys were actually thought to be completely extinct in Thailand. I think they spotted one back in like 2013. Um, but they're, they're just slim to none. I don't know, you know, that these are really being spotted in the wild anymore. So, and they're not very common in, in captive facilities either. So that's why it's so important, you know, to really get a grip on this species in particular. Gotcha. So, um, Wow. Yeah, it's <laughs> just I'm sorry I, we should be talking, but I'm just staring at the cats. <laughs> they're incredible. No, dude, they're, they're awesome. incredible. They're absolutely stunning. Let me flip, we'll, flip it around. We'll definitely okay. have to uh there we go. once all this uh stuff is over, we're gonna have to come over and visit at some point and just like dude, it's show it up. I promise. I would <laughs> love to get a proper four K tour on the on uh your facility, yeah, facility, because man, like this is, I'm sure this is showing nothing compared to what you guys got going on. I mean, I've seen your videos, so. Yeah, I mean, that, I was going to say, there's, you know, so much. I can walk you around and show you more of the stuff. I know you guys are on a time limit, um, yeah. but that it, it's definitely, you know, something that I think is worth people coming to see because we've been to a few facilities that were just like, they blow us out of the water. And so we're constantly trying to improve. Um but I would love for you guys to come and see it just because, you know, this is what we do all day, every day. It's a lot of work. So we're hoping that people really will understand why it's so important to us. It's really awesome that you guys have this drive to like, you know, keep improving and building upon. And, you know, like we we're talking about earlier, instead of squirreling money away for, you know, whatever, you're just dumping it back into the animals you love. So that's amazing. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's like, that's where all our money goes anyways is, <laughs> to the animals um and so now having this place and, and being able to have people come out and do tours it's just going to allow us to do better and better and better um and i think that's what's important is you know there's a lot of people that like i said support facilities that aren't always trying to do better so you know i don't care where their money goes if it goes to us if it goes to somebody else they just need to make sure it's going to something better mm -hmm. wow well, we'll make sure to uh, link up everything on here so that we can get some uh, money flowing to you if we can help in any way. Yeah. So Cool. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'd say the only other thing that I like to recommend to people is, like, if you think you want a pet monkey or, you know, a pet this, a pet that, go somewhere that has an adult version of that animal uh, and spend weeks working with them that's the only way you're going to really know what you're getting yourself into and it's the only way to make sure that you don't get an animal that ends up having to go to a sanctuary a rescue somewhere mm -hmm. like us or a place that you think is good and is not and you think you did something good for the animal by sending them to a rescue and you don't realize that it's just living in a little tiny cage by itself um yeah. so you know it's just all about research and really being involved and just don't get a little baby animal because it's cute it's a fine idea. Talk yeah. to somebody who's had one for 10 years and ask them how many times it sent them to the emergency room. Yeah. <laughs> I always tell people, like, you see people all the time post a picture with a cute little baby monkey. How many times have you seen somebody post a picture with their 10, 20, 30, 50 year old monkey? You know, a lot. Like, these animals live a long time, and all you ever see people post are babies. There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Where are all the adults? So yeah. it's just, they. I just need people like, I just want people to wake up and, and recognize and do what's best for the animal. Absolutely. That's probably a great way to come out of this thing. Do what's <laughs> yeah. best for the animal. There we go. I agree. So you want to take us out, Ren? Sure. Well, thank you so much for taking some time with us. It's awesome to get a behind the scenes peek of all these great animals. Seems yeah, like absolutely. you're doing great stuff there. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash the like button. <laughs> subscribe hit the notification bell we'll put the links down below so you can help these guys out and keep on their mission and have a great day yeah Thanks all right
Thanks for coming on. That was Thanks. awesome. So yeah. Uh... Hey. Does that work? It does. It's me? a little choppy. Oh, hey, yep. uh, it Probably because I'm so far away from the house. Um, I can go up to like the bobcat and the lemurs because it's close to the house. But oh. the leopards are like at the back of the property, so we might just not get to use the leopards. That's all right. As long as we can hear you well and it's it's pretty good, I think uh, I think we're gonna give it a whirl. Okay, I can do a little bit here and then move up front. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Oh my God, I need somebody to feed the cows. So shut up. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> I know. I really might have to go give her a bottle so she'll shut up. <laughs> so, um, first of all, thank you so much for uh, doing this. I know it's been like kind of crazy and hectic the last uh, I know. week and stuff, though. So. Oh, I appreciate you having me on. I'm sorry. It's been hard to get on. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite all right. That cat sounds weird. Yeah, the cat. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, oh my God, I'm going to have to feed the cow. Okay. Well, take us with you. We'll, we'll, we'll okay. watch. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> There's the llama and the cow and the baby donkey. And I currently have a, a zonkey that is demanding attention. So I'm going to go <laughs> get a cow bottle. <laughs> um, so, okay. so Sabrina. Get his face in. <laughs> I'm figure this out. You're all right. Um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out how to get him in the camera. It's all good. Um, go. That works just fine. Oh, <laughs> it's up there. Can you see him or no? Not, Not really. exactly. No. <laughs> Ryan's, Ryan's actually I looking higher. Yeah, I can't really. But you know, we don't do a lot of videos. Just me and you anymore. We need to do more of that. I know. We're not very interesting. I oh, know we we are so interesting. Our poop is bad. We don't bond with each other like we do our other primates. 